Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen video for you. Today is very special. I've received my Pen BBS 492 Year of the Rat Magnetic Piston Filler Fountain Pen. I've been excited about this pen since it was first announced in a teaser video on Instagram back in mid-January. This is an interesting and intriguing and fab and gear and all those other pimply hyperboles fountain pen. You'll really dig them, that fab and all the other pimply hyperboles. It is a new fountain pen filling mechanism on a newly designed pen by my favorite pen maker, Pen BBS. It is also an old fountain pen filling mechanism having already been patented in the United States in 1954. It's also one of only 500 pens made to celebrate the Chinese Year of the Rat. So, let's unbox this cool pen and see what number of the 500 I've got here right now. Alright, so this has to be the largest a box I've had for a pen from Pen BBS or anywhere. It absolutely fills the frame. So, let's see whether I can get this thing open on camera. And as always, we will speed the process up for you. And finally, here we have the box. Happy New Year, 492, 2020 and a bunch of Chinese. The Year of the Rat. That's a pretty happy rat. Well, since my last name is Rathbun, it starts with rat. So, let's see whether we can get this out of here. This was also the fastest shipping I've ever experienced from Pen BBS or any other Chinese seller. This was left China on the 14th and has arrived on the 18th. That's incredible. So, a very large Pen BBS box. And we lift the top off. And we see a bottle of ink with a rat on it, and there's the pen. Shall we do an ASMR? I think so. And it's beauty tour time. Let's see what number. Oops, there we go. Get it right side up. 82. Yeah, my IQ. Actually, it's a little less than that if you talk to one of my YouTube haters. Less than room temperature is what he said. And let's see, one, one turn to get it off. That's interesting. Let's look at that dib. There's our pretty little rat. A 
I might have to name this pen the Rathbun. Nice section. There's our magnetic filler. Ooh, that's strong. And that might require a push. Yeah. Oh, oh, it actually came apart. There. That's very good. Very interesting. We'll have to put this up against my Visconti and see how much they love each other. I also want to see whether it posts. Well, that's interesting too. It is long and back weights, but it posts securely. It posts better than the 500, I think. I think there are some head-to-head -head shootouts coming along. 456, 355, 500, and this 492. I feel a shootout coming on. And let's look at the ink bottle. There's our pretty little rat. And that's very, very nice. It's frosting up because it's cold outside, of course. This came to my door, so there's no marching through the snow for you folks. And that's a very nice cap. Look at that. Now I'm noticing it. Because I'm looking at it camera I'm looking at reality and that is a lovely mother of pearl abalone type shell and I know abalone shell and I know fake abalone shell uh, and fake mother of pearl we call fake mother of pearl mother of toilet seat because that's what it looks like a toilet seat but this is far from that this looks very nice And that's a fairly wide mouth. Well, I have to think about what I'm going to put in that. I've been thinking about what ink to put in this pen. And I decided that with the rose gold, and I love that matte finish on that rose gold. And that's the 480 kind of clip, that sword clip with a new logo on it. I thought that the Hiroshizuku Yamabuto would be a good match for this pen. And since I don't think I have a pen inked up with Yamabuto, we might have to line up that nib too. I'm OCD when it comes to my nibs lining up in demonstrators. And that beautiful nib is not lined up. And that is a fine point. Mini Fude, I'm very pleased about that. And the one turn to get off is remarkable. So those are my first looks. Let's uh, spend some time cleaning this out, getting it ready to write, and then I'll ink it up on camera because that's one of the most interesting things about this magnetic filler is that it is uh, a new and an old filling system at the same time. So as I said in my intro, this is fascinating. Fascinating. And interesting. And fab and gear and all those other things. Because it is new and it is old. It is new to us. Well, it's new to me anyway in the as terms of a fountain pen filler, but it also was patented back in 1954. So uh, we'll take a look at that interesting history as well and see how much information we have. But I'm going to clean this up. I'll come back and we'll ink it up with some Yamabuto. I'll do some measurements, some size comparisons. We'll do a writing sample and probably a little bit more with this pen, I think since this is deserving of that very, very special, special pen and special day. I'm excited. I hope you are.
Okay, I thought I'd just take a moment while I've got the pen disassembled to, let, to take a look at the pieces. Of course, there's the cap and the body. And the section comes out of the body just like most typical pen BBS sections do. And there's a rubber, sorry, a silicone O-ring right there and some threads. And that actually glides on there a little bit better than most eyedropper oval pen BBS pens do. Well, that section feels very nice. And I'm going to put some silicone grease on that. And of course the, the standard nib and feed assembly for pen BBS fits this pen. And before I clean it all up, I thought I'd show you the parts. And that just screws down inside the section. I'm not going to take it apart any further than that. It looks like there's some threads there on the end cap that holds the magnet assembly together and the piston assembly. And then, of course, there's another magnet in the finial of the cap. So I'm going to uh, clean this up, and then we'll come back and ink it up on camera with some Yamabudo. I took the rest of my Roshizuku Yamabudo and put it in this lovely glass container, ink bottle. So... I'll put these pieces back together again after I've cleaned them. We'll come back and look at the parts and features of this pen. Okay, I'm back after cleaning the pen out with some soapy water. As I said, I've filled my lovely rat ink bottle with some Yamabudo. But for the first filling on camera, I tinted a glass of water with some Yamabudo to make it more transparent and easier to see how the pen fills on camera. So, after this demonstration, I'm going to look at the parts and features of this pen as I've become familiar with them over the last number of hours. Then we'll look at some measurements and size comparisons, and I'll come back with a writing sample and a little discussion about modern versus vintage technology when it comes to pen filling systems as well as a look at how to obtain this pen and how I obtained this pen. I think I mentioned earlier that this pen is one of 500 made. This one is number 82, as we saw on the end button. And this pen intrigued me from the moment I saw the demonstration video in mid-January. It's a very cool concept and elegant in its execution, and it has caused some good amount of discussion from Reddit to the Fountain Pen Network, and of course on Facebook, with the gang over there at the Pen BBS group, Taste the Rainbow. Hi guys. What's up? Before I continue, I want to note that I was able to slide this piston out. And I took the pieces apart earlier, and I did want to show that you can take the cap and when you've taken the section off, you line up the magnet and you can slide it out of the barrel. Of course, now it's not going to move. Stuff, stuff, stuff and stuff, history and stuff and stuff, people, people, someone's name, history and sports. Big disaster, someone's name, stuff and stuff and stuff and stuff, history, someone's name, something I don't know. Okay, I was just showing how to slide this magnet out of the barrel and it got stuck. So I might have cleaned this out a little bit too clean. I did put some silicone grease on there, but it seems to have gotten itself stuck, which afforded me the opportunity, as necessity is the mother of invention here, but they've already thought about this. That end piece, I pushed it down onto a piece of my gripping material and twisted it rubber band would work as well and very similar to the the back of the 500 which you can turn and it releases 
that rod. See, I put a little dot on mine, which makes it a little bit easier. This is the same concept. You just twist that around and it unscrews. There's that piece, my numbered piece, 82. And then you can take something to unstick that piston if ever that happens to you. You can push it down. Of course, you can push it down from the other direction as well. But now it should move. There we go. It's moving for me. I want to lose that piece. And it will slide right out. And then let's take a look at this. This is that magnet. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Whoa. So there's the magnet with it right side up. Pen BBS logo on it and that new kind of design and 2020. And it has a negative pull and I'm sure the other side has a positive under it. But there's a screw thread in there and this is a piece of acrylic and a regular silicone o-ring. The same one that goes on the section goes on this little piston. So if ever you need to replace that, they're just as common as that. And then you can put a little silicone grease on that. And I think I will. It's obviously I didn't put enough on it. A little dab right there. And run it around. And it slides right back into the barrel. There we go. But that makes this very, very easy to clean out. You can get all that metal right off that barrel and soak this if you want to. If it's uh, staining or something like that, you can soak it in some water for a while, a little bit of ammonia or something. And we're going to tighten that bit down. Give it a little bit of a push with our gripping material. And there we have it. Voila. Good as new. Don't panic. So let's give this a try, shall we? And see whether we can get a good angle on this so you can see what's happening here. So, first of all, the interesting thing is they've got the magnetic poles on this piston set so that when you put it against this, it repels at one side. So that's north, north, and there's south, south, but south is always on the Pen BBS logo. So you put that logo and that logo together and you move the piston down to the section and then we're ready to fill. I'm going to dip the entire section, uh, the entire uh, feed all the way up to the section down into the liquid and we're going to move up and we're going to move up slowly because what we learned about cavitation from, from Chris. Cavitation will create air bubbles in that liquid. And look at that. First time. And that is a lovely fill. Now, I've already done this once, off camera, and I measured that, and that is exactly three milliliters of ink, or in this case, colored water. And the reverse is true as well. You can go and push this out, but there's no need to actually expel this uh, with the piston, like this. You can always just if you're wanting to get rid of the ink and clean out the pen, you can just remove the section and pour the ink out as if it was an eyedropper and do it that way. 
But if you want to eject the ink this way, it's just as easy as doing that. Now, some people were concerned about the fact that this cap on the body will cause some scratching. But if you're concerned about that, just put a polish cloth over your cap if you're concerned, and it works just as fine. Actually, if you practice at it, you don't even have to touch the surface. It'll come up without touching. Just like magnetic magic. Okay, so now let's take a good look at this pen from top to bottom. At first look, it is a flat top and bottom tapered pen of a good size and is a clear demonstrator with rose gold matte hardware. The turned clear acrylic resin is as good as I've seen on a pen BBS pen, which I consider to be some of the best resins for fountain pens. Moonman also makes some exceptional clear acrylic resins. The cap finial is the first item of fascination for me. Fascinating. The magnets in the cap are encased in acrylic, and this Year of the Rat emblem is under that acrylic. It is not on the surface, but it is encased in acrylic. And it looks like there's two magnets in here, but it might just be the shape of the magnet itself. The other thing that's very interesting here is that that ring that holds the clip together is embedded in acrylic as well. And if you open up the cap and look inside, I don't know whether it can focus on that or not, but that is encased in acrylic as well. So that clip extends out of the acrylic and the entire finial with the little logo on the mag magnet and the ring that holds the clip together are all encased in that acrylic. And of course there's that machine step that seals right against that, the edge of the section. So it seals that nib in. So I'm going to have to wait to hear from Chris about how that's engineered or manufactured or machined. I have no idea how they do that, but it's, it's very well done. The edges are really nicely rounded here as well. There's nothing sharp about this. But it looks very sleek and very well engineered. The clip is the Pen BBS sword clip that you find on the 353, the 355, the 380, the 456, 480, and the 500 models but it is a matte finish. I like this clip. I've always liked this clip. My first one was the 480, I think. No, it was the 456. There's a 456, and you can see the sword clip on there. The latest one is the 500, and it has that same clip. It's very springy and very easy to use and very serviceable. It works well and is very attractive. The cap is straight to the cap band, which is a completely new design and is actually convex. You can see that or not, it's a convex shape. Very interesting. And it has a number of lines that look like they're engraved into that surface of, again, the matte rose gold. It does say Pen BBS on the back with our smiling rat and 2020. And there is a little divot there which is lovely because it echoes in negative space the end of that clip. I think that's very clever in it for a design element and uh, gives the pen an overall art deco kind of a look. I like it. The barrel is straight almost to the end where it tapers about two millimeters to the end plug, which we just saw removed, and it has that little rat as well, and your number engraved. The barrel looks very much like a 355. In fact, the entire pen looks like a 355 to my eye. Now you can see here's a 355. This is the bulk filler, and the pen is a little bit smaller than the 355, 
but the barrels look like they're exactly the same. I'd have to look at the measurements, but they feel like maybe the, the 492 is slightly slimmer than this, but the same kind of a feel and shape to it as the 355. As we saw earlier, the cap comes off with just about one turn, one and a bit, and that's very nice. It reveals a concave section that I swear is identical to the 323. Let's bring out my 323 and compare that. My 323 Amber is a cat, which I put a roll stop on. And let's look at those two sections next to each other here. Now I'll have to put my calipers on this to measure them. They look identical to me. Maybe not in terms of the threads, but certainly in terms of the concave shape and length, which is wonderful for me. I mean, that's a real plus because I think the 323 is ergonomically the finest pen I've ever held. Now it's got some drawbacks in terms of the clip, lack of a clip and lack of posting and things like that, but that section and the feel of that body is one of the most sublime writing experiences I've had. And I'm glad that they put that section, very pleased they put that section on this pen. Now let's look at the nib again. This is in the same rose gold as the rest of the hardware, but this is shiny plated steel. It is a number six size mini food a fine nib of which I am very fond. If you've been watching my videos, you know this. I can't wait to put this nib to paper with some real ink in it. As we saw earlier, the pen posts securely, but not very deeply. But even though it's unwieldy in terms of its length, it's something that if you need to keep track of your cap while you're writing something, a quick note or something like that, that is very possible to do. I wouldn't write with it at any length with it like this. I would write with this unposted. Somewhere to put your cap and it's not going to go anywhere. It's actually on there very securely. That is a really nice bonus because the 500 didn't have that feature. It posts, but not very securely, and it is wobbly, and it makes it extremely long on the 500. Even though I love this pen, that's one of the drawbacks. So that's a plus here, that that cap posts. The pen does feel slightly back-weighted when you post it, and the length is unwieldy, but it's not as bad as the 500 or the 355, but not as good as the 456. And here's a 456, and you can see what I mean. That posts very deeply and very securely, and it doesn't make the pen overly long. I can write, when, in fact, I like writing with the 456 posted. Now that I've demonstrated the filling mechanism, I'm going to dry the pen out, fill it with some real Yamabuto, and come back with a writing sample after these measurements and size comparisons. Okay, I'm back after writing with this pen for a while. Before I get to the writing sample and my observations about this pen, I wanted to talk briefly, as if I could ever be brief, about two things. One, how I obtained this pen, and two, the origins of the magnetic filler and some of the concerns about the design. I have to thank Chris Rapsick for pointing me towards the TB Focus uh, website to acquire this pen. He posted fairly discreetly on the Taste the Rainbow Pen BBS Facebook group the link to tbfocus.com, which is an English translated front end to Taobao or Daobao, depending on your accent, 
There was no other way, and is no other way currently, to acquire this pen. However, I don't think I'll ever repeat my TB Focus experience again. You know how you felt the first time you ordered something from the back of a comic book or a mad magazine? Fool your friends, x-ray glasses. Make the hostess's underwear shift two feet to the left. And such generators were often used to break the ice at parties by making all the molecules in the hostess's undergarments simultaneously leap one foot to the left, in accordance with the theory of indeterminacy. Get a real working switchblade for only 50 cents. You're all excited about getting something amazing, and it turns out that you just made a fool out of yourself. Well, I remember saving up to buy my switchblade through the mail. Imagine, 10 years old and you can get your own switchblade. When it arrived, it was, of course, an inch long and an inch and a half when flicked open. That's not a knife. <laughs> knife. That's a knife. Well, I had a similar feeling ordering through TV Focus. We get so used to the excellent customer service we received from Benny Zhu and Zhilong Su through Etsy and PenBBS respectively that we forget that not all online buying experiences are the same. TB Focus will show you the price for an item in Chinese currency. I thought that I could use a currency converter and get my price in Canadian dollars. Convert the shipping fee into Canadian dollars and you have your final price. No such luck. As many of us now know, TB Focus shows you there are steps in the ordering process. You put something in your cart and then you are faced with six steps. First, payment, then processing, ordered, arrived, second payment, and shipped. Seems simple enough. I figured that first payment was the item's price as listed. You pay that, they process it, and order it from the supplier. And then it arrives at TB Focus. Your second payment is the shipping. After you paid that, they'll ship it. Simple, right? Not. Even though they provide a shipping calculator, you never find out the final price up front. You have to commit to buying something not knowing what the final price will be. TB Focus even added a third payment between payment one and payment two. I paid up front for the pen. They told me they ordered it and told me to pay again, which I assumed was the shipping. But then I got a notice asking for a third payment which was the shipping. At this point, I'm hooked. I have to pay. The shipping was more than the price of my Pen BBS 500. So, buyer beware. I'm very pleased with this pen, make no mistake, and I have nothing but praise for Pen BBS. But I'll not venture down the TB Focus or Daobao path again. Now that I've got that off my chest, let's talk about this fascinating, fascinating. new old technology. When Jiong Su posted the video demo of the magnetic filling system on this pen, I was intrigued by the innovation. Within days, however, a number of people pointed out that this was old technology and a patent from 1954 in the name of Jose Carlos Mias was posted on the Fountain Pen Network to prove it. I can't find any information on any pens developed during this time period using this technology. It could be that the materials available and the manufacturing processes necessary to produce a pen with this design were not an option in those days. In the days since this pen's announcement, there have been numerous discussions about it, pros and cons, as well as some examples of other magnetic piston filling pens that have been previously developed. The Piedmont fountain pen is an example of other pen makers who have used this technology. However, it looks like the Piedmont uses a magnet on a much smaller cartridge converter-sized reservoir that you take out of the barrel. There have been all kinds of concerns about this pen from people who have never held it or used it. Of course, I was interested to see how all this works as well, but I'm not going to diss it before I see it in use. One of the concerns was that the cap sliding down the barrel would scratch the pen. It is smooth acrylic on smooth acrylic and will hardly damage the pen any more than being in your pocket. However, putting a tissue or a cleaning cloth around the cap doesn't impede the magnet and will polish your pen as you fill. Another concern was iron gall inks. This would be a problem and I would suggest just not using those inks in this pen. That's a pretty hoopy piece of thick 
walking, you know that? Well, it was nothing, really. Oh, was it? Oh, well, forget it then. Another concern was the magnet near credit cards, watches, or cell phones. I would suggest using care with anything magnetic near these items. So don't put your pen in your purse with your credit cards. Don't hang your credit cards on the fridge with fridge magnets. Seriously, I've never heard anyone complain about the magnets in the many iPad styluses on the market. Here's one I keep attached to the side of my computer. I use it on my iPad. Of course, time will tell how well the pen stands up under use. Now let's get to the writing sample. This is the Pen BBS 492 Year of the Rat. And this is a fine nib. And the ink today is Hiroshizuku Yamabudo. I like saying that, Yamabudo. Let's check the wetness. It's not incredibly wet, but it's typical of a pen BBS fine nib. And I can open up that nib with my little gapping tool easily enough to make it a little bit wetter, but it is very smooth. As to line variation, well, I'm not expecting any. It is, yeah, just a little wee bit, but very stiff. as is typical with these pen BBS nibs. And let's hear it right. Oh, this is just sublime. What can I say? It's a beautiful looking nib. It's a beautiful writing nib. It uh, is just like my Galaxy uh, 480, my Galaxy 500, my uh, Pen BBS 323. Very, very smooth, pleasant experience. And for some reverse writing, Eh, not so much. Very, very dry, very scratchy. Of course, if you like reverse writing, just a couple of strokes on some, some micro mesh will smooth that out, but I don't do that. And some quick writing. Well, there it is, the long-awaited and fascinating, fascinating new old filling system technology, Pen BBS 492 Year of the Rat. I can't wait until Pen BBS offers this in the amber as a cat finish, so there will be a Pen BBS 492 Year of the Rat Amber as a Cat, with the cat's paws chasing the little rat across the nib. <laughs> Now, what do I like and not like? Well, there's a lot to like about this pen. Given that I'm a sucker for various cool filling systems, this techie, geeky, new implementation of an old filling technology incorporates all the things that a pen geek would adore, like magnets and miracles. In a world of magnets and miracles. I think the thing I like the most about this pen is the design and the engineering. Often Chinese designs appear gaudy or clumsy to the Western eye. This pen is elegant. This might only be a one-off design for 2020, but I love the use of the matte rose gold on the hardware 
and the beautiful Art Deco touches, the negative space notch that echoes the clip on the band, the concave rib design of the band, the three different implementations of the rat motif. One is on the finial and on the nib. Then there's a second one on the back of the cap band and a third one on the button on the bottom of the barrel. Of course, you can count a fourth one as well if you count the little cartoon rat that greets you on the box sleeve. But this pen just doesn't look nice. It is an excellent writer as well. And what sets excellent design apart from the ordinary is when form and function merge into something that is proficient in its function and use, but also delights the senses as a work of art. That is what we have here. The nice little rat motif with the engraved number is not just pleasing to the eye, but it's also a mechanism to be used to clean and maintain the pen without tools. Elegant design, elegant function. I've been writing with this pen for hours and hours and pages upon pages. I wrote out all of the dialogue for this review with this pen. Obviously the unboxing and the first looks accepted. The pen just gets better and better. It is a beautiful writer on par with my beloved Galaxy 480 and my sublime Amber is a Cat 323. Although it has not supplanted the 323 as my most comfortable pen in my hand. Practically, it's easy to fill and takes more ink than any other piston-filled fountain pen of which I am aware. Only my Moonman C1 eyedropper takes more ink. Additionally, it's easy to disassemble and clean without tools. There's no need for a special wrench or having to grind down a Twisby wrench to get at that piston. All the parts seem to be easily accessible, unless they don't want you accessing them, and then they're neatly buried inside acrylic resin. So what can I say that's negative about this pen? Well, it's bloody expensive. I've already bitched about that, and to be fair, is there another pen out there with this kind of slick technology and design that is in the $100 range? I think not. The only pen that comes to my mind as being as sleek and sexy as this one is the Condit Bulk Filler, and I don't think you can get one of those for 100 bucks. To nitpick a little bit, I would have liked if they had used the shape of the 456's barrel rather than the 355, so the cap might post a little bit deeper than it does. I'm sure that it had something to do with barrel thicknesses and tolerances for the piston, but the 456 still remains the only large capacity non eyedropper pen I own that posts nicely. However, I do appreciate the use of the section from the 323. That is very, very nice. Time will tell, of course, about issues of longevity. Some issues we'll be watching for are the corrosion possible in that magnet in the piston and the scraping or abrasion of the cap and barrel due to the filling. I've already noticed some scratching on the finial and I've reverted to taking my own advice and using a polish cloth around the cap when I'm doing so. I can't think of anything else to criticize. Kudos to Jialong Zhu and everyone involved in the design, engineering, and manufacturing of this marvelous and fascinating... Please, Spock, do me a favor. And don't say it's fascinating. No. But it is interesting. Writing instrument. A very happy new year to all of you in Shanghai. I hope things get much better for you all real soon. And please be safe and well. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to be notified of new videos when they're posted. So that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.